Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So today I'm back with a video request. This was actually requested in one of my comments. Um, I thought this was a really, really good idea because this was, was actually a topic that I saw on Reddit a while ago. Um, someone actually made a post basically putting together some ideas from the community. Um, I didn't 100% agree with it, so this is kind of just my version. Now, this is mainly because some of you might not know about this, but um, what what the game has been doing or what 433 has been doing for quite a while is I don't think it's out out right now but oh yeah it's definitely not out right now but uh they they were selling packages for light dark monsters um basically it costs 400 astro gems each and then use you, you get a normal element version of that monster so before it was something like I think I remember the first one was the succubus um, so uh, just just to take that package for example what you did uh, was you bought you bought one fire succubus for 400 astrogems and it basically gives you a little bit of gold but that gold is basically to cover the evolution cost um, and then if you buy that package 15 times it gives you a free dark succubus and I think at the seventh or eighth buy, I can't remember exactly, it gives you this um, light or dark gleam, and then you're supposed to fuse that gleam with the with the dark succubus to make the light succubus, and that's kind of how I got my light succubus. Um, so basically, you're paying six thousand astrogems for an evil three version of a light dark monster, um, a light dark four star monster, basically. So, but uh, after the succubus package, they they did the tiger package, so they sold the tigers, and then they sold the Lokis. Um, I'm speculating, since in a previous patch before they they started doing these packages, they actually did this balancing patch where they buffed a, a few dark monsters. They actually buffed four. Um, one of them was the light succubus, one was the tiger, one was the Loki, and the other was the wild thing. Um, so I'm actually just guessing or I'm, I'm predicting that the next package is probably going to be the wild thing um, because if, if we're following a pattern here I think that's what they're doing. But I think, I don't know, it actually should be out by now if they, they were planning to do a package. They might not be planning to do a package, uh, maybe they're planning to do it once a month, maybe they think twice a month is a little bit too much for most players to handle, um, but uh, this is just a me going through every single light dark nat 4 monster that isn't part of a event, fusion, rebirth, some sort of special summoning, basically like normal monsters that you can only get from a light dark egg, and I'm going to be going through them and talking about which ones are worth uh, buying for 6,000 astrogens basically. Okay, so um, all these are like event or like fusion or like special rebirth monsters or something like that. So I'm, I'm gonna go all the way down to here. Um, and this is the Neza, the Light Neza. Um, <coughs> she has a 80% three turn blind. That's actually pretty powerful. If you, if you think about it for Titans, that, that's actually pretty strong. I think if you if you get her as a I mean, get her as a variant. She actually can pr provide a defense lead, plus an 80% three-turn blind, which is really, really strong for uh, for Titans, and maybe possibly for Colossus. But then again, Sap isn't too good for Colossus. But I do think her Sap is very, very powerful. It's an 80% Sap for two turns. Um, a lot of this is going to be very, very situational because not everybody has the the uh, like not everybody is at the same part of the game. So I think a lot of my explanation is going to be like, if you are already able to do something, then maybe it's worth it for you. But if you're at still at this point of the game, then it probably isn't. For most people, this monster probably isn't worth their time or worth their astrogems. Um, 6,000 astrogems is actually quite a lot. And I think the most um, practical use of this monster, I think it's too expensive of a monster just for Titans, even with a three turn blind. Um, but I think the most practical use of this monster is actually to serve as a as a possible solo light tank um, for for Golem's B10 because she can also sap at the same time. Like she has a very very powerful sap. 80% two two turn two sap is actually very very high. Like there's not a lot of monsters that have those. Um, there's the I think the, there's a Dark Yuki. There's her. There's um, 
there is the water Artemis that has a sap this this good and then there's the water Shiva um, another 80% sap I think even the Sanzang only has 70% right yeah 70% there, there are people with like there are monsters with 100% but that's actually pretty rare there's only very very few monsters there's, there's actually two monsters that I think there's only two monsters that have 100% two turn um, two saps and that's the fire purse and the um, I think the light banshee yes those are the only two monsters with 100% two turn sap the dark yuki actually has skill book upgrades if you upgrade her to full she actually does have 100% two turn sap as well so there's three monsters that currently have 100% two turn saps three monsters that have an 80% two turn sap so um, it's actually not like it's actually pretty uncommon for for monsters that have that that much sap. Plus, she's also very very tanky. So I think it's it's potential like she has potential to serve as a solo tank. She's basically just build her as tanky as possible, and then you can put in like three sappers onto your other teams, and then you can probably make a really really fast um, golden speed ten team just by running her as a sapper. Um, there are definitely better monsters I think to use as a as a sapper, but there's there's very very few like there's. There's monsters like the Light Nightmare, who actually probably is probably the best, but then then again, like this is this this shit's like impossible to get. She has a hundred percent three turn one sap plus um, aggression defense, so I think she, like this is definitely one of the best. Plus, she's also tankier because she's a Nat five. But I think besides besides the Nat fives, besides the Light Banshee, uh, she probably is the best for a light tank in terms of you know if you want also have sap as the AoE. I think she, she definitely does do that job very very well. The... alright, um... should probably take a look at the dark version first. Man, my voice is super super weird right now. I think my throat is just super dry. I'm gonna have a sip. This is gonna be a long video. Okay. Um, the Dark Neza has HP Siphon and Defense Down, 80% for two turns. So, wait, let me let me just take a look at her stats really quick as an attacker. She actually has pretty good stats. Well, not not super good. She's actually really squishy. But if you can somehow um, just if you're only using her for dungeons and she's not going to be taking much damage because she she does have self sustain with this skill and also great, greatly restores her own HP. So the more attack she has. Um, and since she's dark, if you can build her with like enough crit rate that she always crits, she actually might be able to um, basically max heal herself every single turn. If you, even with just even if you put one slot defense or one slot HP, um, I think she actually still would be able to max heal herself every single turn um, on, on a crit or something like that. So I think that's that's actually pretty nice. Defense down 80% for two turns is actually very high. I think she's all right. She's not nothing exceptional. Um, I think the strongest monsters in the game are definitely the ones with unique uses. Like if that only this monster or a certain few monsters can fit this role, then this monster is really really good. Um, but I think in it, she's her her self regeneration plus her damage is probably superior to the fire succubus. But Fire Succubus has the superior utility um, because she basically has the same skill set. And the Fire Succubus, if you get her to 100% crit, she has 100% defense down, which is much, much more powerful. Plus, she also currently has a skill book, so you can actually up her damage even more. Um, and you also, uh, yeah, you also get a, if you skill her up all the way, um, her, her, armor break goes up to three turns so she's actually um, in pretty much in every way more 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 like a better version of of her but she since she is dark she does have higher base um, like base crit damage so she'll probably do more damage but won't have as much utility I don't really think she's worth 6,000 astrogens she's not a monster that has that has some sort of unique skill set um, you know personally I actually might might go for the light neza just to speed up my 
GB10 team even more. I think she can definitely help me speed up my GB10 team if I grab her, because I can basically just run her as like a solo light tank, and then she might be able to provide more sap against the golem, and that will help me, um, you know, kill the golem a little bit faster. Pro probably shave like 10 seconds off my average runtime, so that actually might be somewhat helpful if you're like, you know, in the late game where you're trying to just you know trying to get the fastest farming team possible i think that she actually does have some potential um the light neza okay that this is this video is gonna be long as all hell all right <laughs> um moving on this is the light yaksha she is an attacker um she has defense down and predator um 70 percent three turn defense down Plus, she, if you can get her as a variant, um, there's there's death blow. But if you buy the pack, uh, none none of the none of the normal ones that you get from the pack are going to come out as variants. So it's very unlikely that you get them as variants unless you already have a variant version of this monster. So for most people, um, you probably should not even consider the variant skill if you're thinking about buying these light dark packs, or if you're thinking if you're judging um, these monsters. So I'm, I'm probably going to ignore mostly ignore the variant skills. Um, She's a monster that has 70% armor break plus predator. I think this is mostly a a titans monster. Like she's probably mostly going to be used for for titans. Um, you can I can kind of see her maybe used in some certain dungeons because but you know armor break on first skill d definitely does slow down the run sometimes because um, if you armor break monsters then all your other monsters start focusing that monster and it just makes the the run a little bit slower than than it should be. Um, man, my nose is like I'm getting some sort of aller allergy. Okay, <laughs> oh. I'll make it. I'll make it through this video. Um, the dark version is is a uh, adrenaline. Wait, what? Chance to restore ten percent of allies' HP when attacking. So she's basically like. She's a passive healer, but instead of uh, instead of healing based on her own HP, she heals based on allies' HP. That's actually pretty cool because you can actually build her as like a full nuker and then and then run a light tank, like a solo light HP aggressor tank, like a light Coco or something, for uh, for Golem's B10, and she can provide healing for that monster. And she, she's also dark, a dark balance type. 26,000 attack. Um, not too much recovery, so pretty decent stats. I don't think she's too exceptional, though. There's probably better, way better strategies for B10, like, you know, just running straight out sappers, siphon gems, all that crazy shit. Um, <laughs> probably is not the best strategy for B10, but it definitely does work. I don't, I can see, I can definitely see it working. The Yakshas, personally, I don't, I don't think it's worth 6,000 Astro Gems. None of them are really all that exceptional. Uh, they don't have, they don't bring anything unique to the table. They don't have anything, um, really that other monsters don't have. So I don't, I don't really think they're worth 6,000 Astro Gems. Uh, moving on, the Loki. Loki already passed. I don't think they're probably not coming back for a long time. But I'll just briefly go over them. Uh, light. Light Loki is mostly like a Titan Colossus monster. He's alright, but you know, Titan and Colossus aren't really worth doing until the very, very late game. Um, and there's, there's like, they're replaceable. Like, he's replaceable. He's definitely replaceable. He does, does have a very powerful three turn attack down, but also, also a lot of monsters do have three turn attack downs as well. Um, he has a pretty good skill set. I, I do actually have this monster. I didn't buy the pack, but I, I already summoned him before. It's very weird because I out of the four out of the four monsters that they buffed during that patch, I already had three of them from Light Dark Eggs, which which was super weird. Um, but I didn't need need to buy them, so I was able to use uh, my astrogens for other purposes. Um, Dark Loki's a double seal. Um, I don't like 70% seal is not really all that reliable. He's he's relatively tanky, so if you put him as a you know, arena defense, it could work. Like, he'll just be really annoying, and then people would, wouldn't would really hit him, because he's pretty tanky. And... Yeah, I don't think he's worth 6,000 Astro Gems either. So, Loki's... In my 
in my personal opinion, I don't really think they're worth 6,000 astrogems. Um, the tigers are another monster that was that was already out before. Um, the light tiger, you know, if I if I had to say like this monster is probably worth the 6,000 astrogems, but there's a catch because you only get one chance to get this monster, and this is a crit reliant monster. His his skills re rely on him having crit. And I really only see like one really, I, I do see one really unique use, and he's probably one of the best monsters for the job. He's probably the best monster for the job, but it was re way too risky for me to risk um, 6,000 astrogens or, in order to get this monster because he's also replaceable. Um, there's another monster, the Wood Yaksha, who's a slightly inferior version of him, but much, much easier to get because she's, she's wood. Um, she's inferior because she has 10% less crit, but she has basically the exact same skill set. Um, she has crit leader, while he has attack lead, so it's kind of it's kind of the same. I think if you have 100% crit on everyone, the crit leader probably is better because you're probably gemming most of your monsters with, with double attack. Um, the way to get optimal attack, like the general rule, is to have like uh, is to go one for one, um, like you know 1% attack for 1% crit damage. That is. The general rule for most attack type monsters um it's not like a hundred percent it's just the general rule because not all monsters have the same amount of base attack so there's a lot of calculation a lot of math that goes behind that but to follow the general rule is just you know one for one so i think crit crit damage leader um if you have all your monsters with 100 percent crit is in most cases superior to um to attack lead because most of the time you're not going to be putting a crit damage gem you're probably going to be putting either two attack gems or if you're building a monster hybrid you're going to put, be putting one attack gem and one defensive gem um, on that monster so uh, the reason why this monster was not really worth it was because you know he requires crit and you basically you have to roll a square slot on this monster and if you don't roll square slot square slot on him, he's basically just 100% useless. So, yeah, that's 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 pretty much it. Like, it was too risky for me to risk this 6,000 astrogems for me to like eat for 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 a 50/50. Uh, well, well, it's not actually not 50/50 because there's a lower chance for you to not get a square slot, but it's still somewhat risky. I think there's like a 20 something percent chance. I just didn't want to risk it, so I didn't. I didn't really go for him. Um, the dark tiger. I wait, where the where the heck? Uh, dark tiger. I actually have this monster. I actually pulled him before, as I mentioned. Um, he is. He he's. He's all right. Like. He he's not really all that exceptional either. Like stat wise, he's he's somewhat tanky. Um, you know, people you can put him in like PvP defense. People ignore him. Stat wise, he's not too good. He has a lot of HP, but like really low defense. You can see a lot of his stats went into recovery. No attack either, so he's just basically going to be doing absolutely nothing. Like if you put him on your defense team, he's just not going to do anything at all. Like people are just going to ignore him, and he's just he's going to sit there like. Like a dumbass, basically, for the, for the ex entire fight. Um, like I, I, I can see some uses of him. Like maybe if you put him on a pugilist set, he can like be really annoying with stuns. But even with pugilist monsters, there are definitely better pugilist monsters. Like um, you know, certain certain other um, you know higher higher attack bar boosting monsters. For example, water. Where, where the fuck is she? Uh, Water Succubus, who has like a 50% if you have crit, and then still has the attack down. If you put on Pugilist, like, she's gonna get her bar so much faster. And she's also very, very tanky, like, she has much better stat distribution than him, has higher base attack as well, has higher base resistance, that's one of the disadvantages to ha being a dark monster as well. Um, you have, like, zero base resistance. So, in my opinion, the Tigers aren't really worth it either. Um... Moving on, the the Suras. Okay, the Light Sura is basically just like the Dark Yaksha. He heals the allies um, based on their HP, and then he has a 20% heal based on allies' HP as well. He's also balanced, but he's he's relatively 
yeah, he's, he has really nice stat distribution. Like, this is this is really nice to see. Like, no recovery, good defense, good attack, good HP. Like, just, this is good. Um, hmm, does he really bring anything? I, I'm, I'm thinking of some uses, like, maybe you could use him for. But, like, I mean, this is a pretty unique skill set, but I, I don't really see any practical uses of, of having this skill set. Because most of the time, if you need a passive heal, like if you need more healing, because if you if were to put this thing on like you know arena defense or anything, for example, um, he's just gonna they're just gonna kill him first because he, they know he's the one healing and he's not tanky himself. If you use him to heal like HP like other HP type healers, uh, H HP type tanks or aggressors, then you know those aggressors are probably gonna be much much more tanky than him. Um, so I think maybe there might be some uses in PV, PV where where you can force other monsters to hit your other monsters but then like B10 is also dark so f like for the late game um, it's not he's gonna still get focused anyway so I, I don't really see any much like I think the the dark uh, dark Yaksha might might have been better than him because of the element. Um, I think he's a pretty good monster, but I, th I think his, it would have been much, much better if he was not light. If he was any other element besides light, I think he would he would have been uh, he would have been really nice, like maybe for, for B10 um, as, as a healer, but it's, it's too bad. Like it just, it, it, it didn't work out for him. Okay, the dark, uh, the dark Sura. Now the Dark Sura is is actually a very very strong monster. Like this this monster is is just uh, actually he's kind of like the Dark Atito. He pre pretty much has he's he's a single target monster as well, um, but he he heals himself instead of getting attack bar. I kind of think this is inferior in terms of both uh i only really use dark Atito in in two ways or, or actually in three ways um i use him in tower of chaos i use him in arena offense and i use him in dragon speed 10. um in both arena offense and dragon speed 10 i think he's inferior to the dark Atito because morale boost i think is much much more powerful because if you can get your bar full the the important thing of these monsters is, is their second skill like if you can get that second skill that hunter nuke up uh, you basically just one shot almost anything, like unless it's like a fire Odin lead, um, with just I don't know, just, unless you're trying to like kill a fire Odin, wh while that fire Odin is on the leader slot, then um, you know you'll pretty much kill almost anything um, with a with a Dark Katito second skill. So it's kind of the same thing for him. You the important thing is to get his second skill up as fast as possible. If you're running a uh, like a dark nuker comp, you want you want you just want like everything to be fast paced. You want your bars full um, as fast as possible. That's why in my arena offense, I run the Gatitos and the Curas because I use the Cura to um, boost the Gatitos bar even even more. I can basically get twenty percent on the second turn because ten percent on the first turn. If I attack first on the second turn, I get another twenty percent. And Gatito has a, a built in thirty percent, so. Um, if I get a little bit of blue souls on him, he basically, there's a very high chance that, um, when I'm running two Gatitos, at least one of them has a full bar on the second turn, allowing me to basically just, you know, completely one shot another monster. Um, that's what makes him so, so much pow more powerful in arena offense compared to the Dark Sura. In Dragon Speed 10, it's the same thing as well, because, uh, in Dragon Speed 10, you want his bar full before the dragon and there's a there's less chance of your dark sura having his bar full um because he doesn't have the morale boost say for example you get wiped on the first wave with the light purse then you go through the second wave and then you kill everything and then you have like horrible blue soul generation uh, when you get to the dragon and you don't have a full bar then basically you can't kill the dragon and you have to revive again or something like that so uh in Dragon Speed 10, the Dark Atito is both more reliable and in, in, as well as in um, arena offense. In Tower of Chaos, I don't think it matters too much. Like he, he can do the same thing as Dark Atito. Nothing really is really uh, 
at risk there. Like, Tower of Chaos is pretty easy. If you have some hard-hitting Dark Nukers, you can pretty much nuke down all bosses. Um, so I think he's alright, but he's... Like, to anyone that has gotten the Dark Atito in the um, events before, then this monster is just much a be much much better version of this monster in, in most cases um, that's 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 just my opinion because I I, I don't use Dark Cotito for everything I just use him for um, just really late game stuff like you this is just from my perspective or I, I I can't I I I uh, a lot of this is really just my opinion I, I um, like you'll You'll see me say shit like Water Nightmare is overrated, like he's not, she's not really all that good because everyone in like top one to one to two hundred is has like max resist on everything, so like it doesn't, you don't really need her for anything. You just want to go with a team that has like no debuffs or some shit like that. But it's not going to be the same for <coughs> anyone um, that's around maybe like diamond or anything like that because not everyone there would have like max resist and yeah and so yeah so this is just based on like where, where I'm in, in the game but I I think it's always a good idea to um, since this is a pretty big investment like 6,000 astrogens it's, it's a much better idea to invest in something that you'll use f for the long term like for the late game rather than something that you'll use temporarily to get you through the mid game because the mid game can be really fast like if if you just play for like two two um like you know two months or something like that you can probably get through like start get a pretty fast like golden speed 10 team and then you'll have the late game unlocked you and you have like potential for for all types of crazy shit um okay I'm, I, I think i'm getting off topic Okay, back to back to vampires. Uh, okay, oh wait, I forgot to give my verdict. Uh, Sura's not worth. All right, Sura's. Wait, which monsters are worth? I, have I have I even said a monster that is worth yet? Um. Light vampire. Hmm. He has. He has self-sustained defense down. He this this thing actually has potential. He actually has has some pretty good potential. He has very high attack as well. I think a pretty decent HP pool. Yeah, two thousand seven hundred. That's a, that's actually pretty good. He has high base attack. He's basically self-sustained defense down. Um, Dark Vampire is Sap Taunt. I. I mean, I haven't fully tested out how good Taunt is against Colossus, but I think Taunt on second skill is a little bit unreliable, especially when it's not even like 100%. So, and then like Sap is basically completely useless against Colossus. So he basically, if you bring him into Colossus, he has like one completely useless skill. Um, I don't think he's really all that worth, although he's really tanky. Like this is, this is pretty good stat distribution for a tank. Like just all HP, all defense. Um... I think the light vampire might actually be worth it. He doesn't require any crits, does he? No, he doesn't. Hmm, 3,300 is pretty high. Because I, I do see some potential in running him in like a full light, um, full light golden speed 10 team. If you have the, the units to do that, like you can bring like a snowy, you can bring him, you can bring um, some light sapper. Maybe you have like the light to Todora or something, and then they can all split the damage and um, do a lot of damage to the Golem and the waves. I think he actually has some. He does have quite a lot of potential because then he can like armor break the boss as well, and um, armor break, and then like light units do a lot more damage to Golem. So. <coughs> He might be worth. He's a he's a worth if if you have like if you're planning to build a light team for Golem. Like if you have certain units, if you have like Snowy, um, some Sapper, maybe you have like maybe you have like the Neza already. Maybe you have 
a banshee, like a light banshee. I think she's also really nice if you're running like a full light team because she's she's too squishy to solo tank. So I think, or if you have um, a light, uh, well actually light Mandragora is pretty tanky. She can probably solo tank. Yeah, she's super tanky. Like she can definitely solo tank. Um, or like the light Toad. Where's the where where the where the yeah, the Light Toad is also pretty squishy, but he's he's also balanced time. He has he has a sap as well, like a three turn one uh, one turn sap, a three one turn sap, sixty percent plus a morale boost, so he can basically spam this quite a lot. Um, I was thinking if you have like certain light sapper units plus a light snowy plus him, and then plus like one more, maybe you want to put um, actually you don't even need Light Vic because he's probably put like two light sappers or some something like that they probably make the run even faster and then he, he the your attacker isn't afraid of like getting getting killed probably build him more tanky and then you have to build he might be too squishy I'm not too sure maybe some sort of other self-sustaining light attacker maybe if you have, have like two light snowies um, two light snowy light vampire and then some sort of light sapper the Toad might be too squishy, but if you have like the Neza or the or the Banshee or the uh, the Mandragora, then it could probably work. Or if you have like a Light Nightmare, if you're like super lucky, that that could work as well. Um, but it's very situational, so like he's get him if if you if you have if you're planning to build like a full light team for B10, it can, it can work. I think it can, it can be a really really fast team. Um, if you pull it off and, and have all the right gems. So yeah, dark one's not worth, light one is maybe worth. That's 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 pretty much it. Um, this is the light Yuki. She has two saps, 80% and a 50% two turn sap. Problem is she's an attacker, so if you ever put her on defense, she's gonna get melted on first turn. Um, she's probably pretty strong on arena offense. There, there are people that run like full light arena offense as well. Those are actually pretty strong as well because they they have no elemental disadvantage. And if you're running like a lot of shockers, it's actually pretty strong. But I think shock is mostly a skill that's that's stronger on defense because it has it's a it's usually like very high risk, high reward because um, like. Actually, this is not really even really high risk, anyways, because it's like eighty percent, pretty high chance to land it. If you land it, um, you know people. But then on like high tier PvP, if you use shock, it just gets resisted, anyways. I don't know. I think I think her typing is just wrong. Like if she was if she was like a tank type or something, she would be amazing. But um, as an attacker, I don't really see any r real practical uses for her. Just because of how the like the way things are in in, uh, in in PvP right now, in B10, uh, you're probably better off using like actual nukers than than CC if you can. And she's also quite squishy, so if you use her in B10, um, there's a there's potential for dying. Like if you you probably will have to sacrifice like some sort of attack stats and build her somewhat tanky in order to make sure she survives in b10 so i i i'm not a big fan of running um full light teams in b10 i know it works but it, um i'm i'm a bigger fan of running like a light tank and then building like attackers that are on like just full glass cannon um and then that way you can just go all out but i mean it could definitely work i think i think she can she can she can definitely do something shock is also useless against uh, dragons, titans, um, shocks useless against colossus. Um, she's a light nuker, but then you, if you have like better dark nukers, like she has no like morale boost or anything, you can't use her for farming. So, yeah, she's she has no practical uses. Like on paper, she looks like a really good monster, but in in the actual game. Of Monster Super League, she has no practical use. That's that's just uh, that's just the way things are. It's just it's sad, but that's that's how things have to be. All right. 
Okay, this monster is very, very good. Um, is extremely good. Probably one of the best. Now, this is going to be like this is going to be an extreme surprise to to a lot of people. Um, if a dark Yuki package comes out, I will buy her for six thousand Astro Gems. But that's just according to me. Um, reason is, I think she's probably one of the best uh, one of the best sappers in the game. Or at least with her second skill. Now she has an 80% sap with two saps for one turn. This doesn't look very strong, but what you guys don't know is on on her skill up. Um, this is to, for some people that actually do have her. We're, we're, unfortunately, we can't actually view her actual skill ups. But uh, when you upgrade her skills to max, her sap chance becomes 100%. And the turns of her sass becomes two turns instead of one. So she basically gets a hundred percent two turn sap, which is the pretty much the same as a fire purse. Um, if you get her to full. She also has she has tank type, but she actually has pretty high attack. So you can actually still build her with um, mostly attack. And you can actually build her with uh, crit rate build as well, because she's she's dark. So you could go crit rate, double attack, and just build her full glass cannon. And yeah, and if you have like siphon gems on her, it doesn't even matter if like what her first skill is. But this is very situational as well. Like this is only for me. This is only for like um, if you're insane about you know cutting off another ten seconds off your golden speed ten runs, um, then I think she's a monster worth getting. Like if it was me, I, I would definitely spend a th six thousand astro gems on her. She does have some sort of practical use in the very very late game of Monster Super League because she's like she is the best uh sapper besides fire purse like if you can max skill her she she is already the best sapper besides fire purse because even all the other nat fives that have like 100 percent saps they are 100 percent um three one turn saps which is inferior to 100 percent two two turn saps like this one and and uh this one see 100 percent three one turn saps so she besides the fire purse she pretty much is already the um, the best the best in the game all right this might be a surprise but this is like super super if you're if you're still progressing do not do this all right this is the only thing that she will help you with is like if you're like super super late game and your your runtime is already like because my goal speed time runtime is like a minute 20 and I am like trying to push the physical limit here, like to to getting my B10 run as as fast as humanly possible. And and all she will do is like if you're at that point in the game, shave off like maybe 10 seconds off your average run time, which actually does add up. So I think it's definitely worth it if you're if you're at that point in the game. But if you're still progressing, like do do not do not get her. She she won't help you at all. <laughs> she definitely will not do anything to help you. Plus you also have to max skill her. Which will probably take quite a while, but I think I would grab her um, when I can, just just in case. Because in the future, I can definitely make some use of her. Um, yeah, I have to grab her and hope she has a score slot. She doesn't have a score slot. She's still usable, but she'll she'll never reach her full potential with the, with the crit damage, um, which will be pretty sad. Okay, this this right here is like a hundred percent worth like. 6,000 Astro Gems. This is, this is like double HP aggression, light monster, um, you know, 43k base health. Doesn't have much defense, but who, who the hell cares? Like, she, she's gonna hit like a truck. Um, plus, she's really tanky because of the, the high base health. You can always boost her defense up with some, uh, with some substats, plus maybe a defense lead. Now you don't need a defense, so you just need more HP. Basically, just like screw all damage mitigation, just stack more HP. Um, H HP has no diminishing returns, so you can just keep stacking HP. Like it, it's not as effective as if you had a good balance of HP and defense. But if you, if you're, if that monster really has no defense at all, you can just stack HP. Really, um, this is a really, really strong aggressor. Like she's amazing. Like if I could. Like, I was thinking of saving up astrogems, like, multiple... Saving up, like, a lot of astrogems, just in case they ever release her as a package. Because then I would just buy multiple of her. 
and then just run her as my defense. Because um, the the thing that makes her so strong is because she's she's a light aggressor. So if you use plus she's HP based, so if you use like dark attackers to to hit her, uh, even if you like defense break her, she's not even gonna care too much. So all you really need to do is just like stack a shit ton of HP and just like run like three of her plus an HP lead. And then the enemy, if they're running like a full dark defense, they're they're just fucked because they they like you're just out you're just out stat them basically like because you have five monsters, they have four. Even if they get the first turn, um, they there there's a chance that they won't kill one of you. And even if they kill one of you, there's a there's a very high chance that if they have a team that's like offensive enough to kill um, one of you like one of her on first turn there's a very high chance that you're gonna kill two of them on the second turn um, and that's that's what makes her so strong like if you can get like multiple of her it's gonna be insane um, I think even with one like if you just have some like light monsters some very threatening light monsters just run them with her she'd probably be pretty amazing I definitely get her she's definitely worth 100% like worth Uh, I already have the Dark John. I, I think she's also very very strong on uh, arena defense, but only under certain situations. Her stat distribution is very 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 nice. Like it's high HP high defense, um, very high HP very high defense. Like really tanky. Um, I would have wished the recovery went went more into a little bit of attack or something like that, so she can kind of do a little bit of damage at the same time. But I think. I think she's really strong. Like she has morale boost and silence. I, I really like morale boost monsters, and I'm I'm starting to like morale boost monsters more and more because I'm trying to put together like a morale boost pugilist um, arena defense team. It's gonna be super super annoying. It's gonna be like the most cancerous shit you guys have ever seen. Uh, but that, that's also for very very late game. Like it's for people that have been farming dragons for for quite a long time. You need like pretty good pugilist gems to to probably make her very good. I do have some good gems that I can put on her, but unfortunately I don't have enough Johns to make her evil 3. If I did, I probably would build her immediately and put her on my defense team. I think she's a really, really good monster, but I don't really think for most people she's worth um, 6,000 Astro Gems. She's probably not worth it. The the Light John I think is probably worth 6,000 Astro Gems because she not only helps with uh, like late game, she's also very good with progression because she's an, she's an aggressor. You can use her for every single golem stage. Plus, she's really tanky. So, like, if you need her to tank anything, she'll just tank that, no problem. Um, she's light as well, so you can use her as a light tank for golem speed ten. She has like so many uses. You can use her everywhere. You can use her for farming. You can use her for all the golem stages. You can use her for uh, arena offense, defense. You can use her for. Um, you can put her on titans. She can do some damage as well. It's not too ideal, but. Like, not too amazing, but, you know, she can at least do something um, if she has good stats. Like, aggressors still do damage to Titans. It's, just, it's not amazing for Titans, but it's not bad either. And... What's the last thing? I don't know. I, I don't know if, how aggressors work against Colossus. I don't think they work too well against Colossus, but that's like... She covers pretty much all aspects of the game. Like, she's just amazing. Like, she's... This is probably one of the best monsters to buy for 6,000 Astro Gems. I would definitely get her if, if they ever um, put her out. If I have like a lot of Astro Gems, I would get multiple of her just for the hell of it. Uh, not for the hell of it, like for for uh, maximum cancerous bullshit. Um, okay, moving on. Light Leo. Light Leo is a Morale Boost Stunner. He is an attacker. Oh my god. God damn it. They, they ruined him. God damn it. If he, if he was not a... Like, if this was... If he had this skill set, and he was like defender or HP type, he would just be amazing for a defense, but... They had to fuck him. They had to, they had to fuck him up by making him an attacker. Alright. <laughs> Dark Leo is actually really good. Uh, he's amazing for Colossus. He's amazing for Titans. He's amazing for. He's really good for uh, Dragon's B10 as well. And. He's decent for Arena Defense. He's pretty good for Arena Offense. Um, he's actually pretty, pretty damn good for Arena Offense if you can get him as a variant. 
because he's dark, dark attacker, and with pretty decent base HP, so he can like at least um, tank some damage. If you put an HP lead, you can make your other attackers really tanky. On my arena offense, I run Dark Cupid as uh, my leader for for HP lead, so it's actually really nice. Um, I think I think Dark Leo's worth. Dark Leo's definitely worth. Yeah, not a lot of monsters have a hundred percent attack down. There's only no. I think he's the only no. There's only two monsters. There's only two monsters in the game with a two turn hundred percent attack down. There's only the w Water Gatito and uh, and Dark Leo. And Dark Leo has better stats. He's dark. He has better leader skill. He's um. Where the f yeah, Water Gatito, hundred percent two turn attack down. Um, the only the only other thing that comes close, I mean, the Light Kill has a one turn, which is kind of unreliable because if you miss it for a turn, you're just you just have no attack down. Um, but I think the only other thing that really comes close is like what what Senzang because um, he has a ninety percent less. That's like ten percent less. So I think this is very valuable. Like 100% attack down is extremely valuable. I, I definitely grab him for 6,000 astrogens. I think. Actually, it's kind of iffy. I don't know if I 100% need him. Just for titans, for colossus. All right, this is this is situational. This is like if you're in the late game, I, I would not grab him if you're progressing, but I would grab him if uh, you're done with a. Uh, Golems, like you have a pretty fast Golems team. You're moving on to Titans. You're moving on to Colossus. You're moving on to Dragons. Then he's definitely a really good monster. I'd, I'd, I'd probably grab him then. So for for people that are like at that point in the game, I think he's definitely worth worth the six thousand Astro gems. Um, we'll go over Succubus again. I bought the I bought the Light Succubus for <laughs> six thousand Astro gems. I have no regrets. I think she's she's amazing. Um, this is really good. Like she boosts morale, morale boosts allies, and then she has a heal. She has a HP lead if you can get her as a variant. But you know, uh, we're not going to talk about variant skills here. But because most people probably won't get her as a variant if they if they do actually get her, I probably would not grab her as a progressing player because she's mostly for. Um, she has a few niche uses. I do actually use her in my B10 team. I have like two B10 teams. I have a stable one and a slightly unstable one, but that's like 10 seconds faster. Um, <laughs> I use her on my stable team. She basically just solo tanks B10. I mean, like with these stats, she can already solo tank B10. So I think she's, um, you know, if you have anything tankier, then they can definitely solo tank B10. So I think she's a pretty... She's a pretty pretty decent monster to grab, um, but also very situational. If you're like at the very very late game, I think she's a pretty good monster to get for for six thousand astro gems. Um, the dark succubus is where the, where the I've seen some people run her on defense. She's probably just like a really annoying monster just to try to CC enemies. I mean, she's really tanky, so she gets ignored. But, I mean, Sleep's not really all that threatening, because, I mean, if she does, lands a two-turn Sleep, it's a pretty strong CC. But, like, the AI is pretty dumb, and the animation times are kind of bad, so if you have anything that attacks slower than her, they, they just immediately wake up the, the unit that's, like, put to Sleep. So she actually limits your team comps quite a bit. Um, basically have to use units that attack faster than her. Because the AI in this game is like super dumb if you want to use her on defense. Um, but I think if you can set a team up with her, she actually might be pretty strong on arena defense. But that's like a super, super niche use. I don't really think she's worth it. Um, Light Succubus is like iffy as well, so... But she's also not a unit that you 100% need, so... I mean, looking back at it, I don't, I, I don't regret it at, at all. But I think she's definitely something you can skip if you don't really feel like getting her. Like, she really won't hurt you. Like, skipping out and not getting her probably will not hurt you at all. So if you don't really want her, you can just 
skip her as well. Like it doesn't doesn't really matter too much. All right. This unit is the unit's a fucking troll. Um, <laughs> okay, okay. I'm. I mean, he's pretty unique. He's the only monster with uh, recovery aggression. And he's got zeal, so that's... I mean, that restores SP, but it's like... Kind of shitty. It's not really all that good. Um, compared to all the other buffs. He's a very mediocre healer. And recovery aggression, like, kind of doesn't really help at all. Because you would have to build recovery, which sacrifices tankiness. Plus his base stats are not all that good. Um, because most of it is in recovery because to you know to boost his recovery I've actually heard that recovery has really high scaling with uh, with damage like recovery aggression has really really high scaling with recovery so I don't know maybe you can do some crazy shit like you know double recovery double recovery crit rate ruin or some shit like that I have no idea maybe he'll do insane damage he'll be like the best nuker in the game Someone has to test it out. Okay, we're... He's not good, alright? That, that unit's a fucking troll. Um, Dark Cupid, this is like... This is like... I, I, like, um, you, you just cannot put into words how fucking OP this monster is. Like, I, I, I tried to PvP without him. I tried to, like, you know, do... I tried to like live life without Dark Cupid, but I I, I can't. It's just it's too hard. I I've been spoiled way too much. Um, he was like the first. I think I, he was like the second healer I pulled. Like I I think I pulled Wood Hana, and then I pulled a Dark Cupid like from a Light Dark Egg, and then I just I've been using him ever since. Like I I started playing this game. I've been using Dark Cupid ever since. Like I just been spoiled as fuck. Um, he. He's so fucking strong, like, it's it's insane. He's got HP aggression, plus a super thick shield that scales with his max HP. And out of all the monsters that have this skill, he has the highest HP pool. So he has a really high HP pool as an HP aggressor. He has, like, no attack because he doesn't need it because he's an aggressor. And recovery is, like, alright because he's actually a healer. And he has a pretty decent amount of defense because it's, like, 2,300. At least it's not 2,000, so... Like, what's not to love? He's, he's perfect in every way. Plus, he's an HP aggressor with an actual HP leader skill, so... That's... Like, that's just the... The cherry on top. Like, it just... It just, uh... If, if that doesn't make you cream your pants, I don't, I don't know what will. Like, I, I just... I, I, just if, if he ever comes out, just buy multiples of him. Um, and just run like a five dark cupid defense like nobody will beat that all right okay where the fuck are we all right we're at the curos uh curos 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 so, like Kira, Shock, Dominance, um, she's she's actually pretty tanky. She's a defender type. Uh, she's a defender type healer monster. She has pretty high defense, decent amount of HP, a little bit too low, but you know she is a light healer. She does have like that thirty percent resist, so you might be able to put a little bit more sub stats and in, in HP to kind of like make up for it. This is the ten percent extra resist. She has a sixty percent two turn Shock and Dominance. So basically, like, what she's used for is for those, like, shock teams in arena defense, like the ones that use Thor's, um, her, and then, like, you know, a lot of other random, stunning, annoying monsters that just, like, if they land a two-turn shock, it just, like, fucks you over. Um, I think she's pretty good. She's definitely one of the, one of the best monsters for arena defense. Um, as a healer, I think if, you, if she gets her dominance buff up, I think the problem with dom dominance and um, SP siphon, like these type of buffs, is it takes one more extra turn for it to activate. So against some offenses, it might be too late. But if it if they're running a, a bruiser comp against you, I think she's definitely pretty strong. If they're running like a full 
dark offensive comp against you, um, this buff isn't really all that helpful. But I think she definitely has her uses. Like if you if you have like a light Thor, um, you can definitely grab her. She will make a very very good addition to your your uh, your PvP team. So so she's kind of situational as well. Like it's, it's a, you can try to you can grab her or you you can don't grab her. It doesn't won't really affect you too much. This is uh, dark dark Kira. Um, Damn, I, I I totally regret making her variant. Her non-variant color looks so so much better. I I regret this so fucking much. Uh, if there was an option, like if they if they ever introduced an option in the game to make your monsters have the appearance of their non-variant forms, and you have to pay real money for it, I would do it. Like I would I would pay real money to to change her back to the way she was before. Um, damn, so much fucking regret. Uh, yeah, this is this is my favorite monster in the game. Uh, not for any re like in-game reasons, just just for like waifu reasons, basically. Like she's she's my favorite monster in the game. Um, she, I got her very very early on. She was one of uh, wh was she? No, she was like my second light dark pull. I think right after my my first one was the light wild thing, and then it was her. Uh, she had a really really unique skill set. The moment I got her, I just I really liked her skill set, but I I've been trying to find a lot of ways to use her in the game and someone actually pointed out to me um, one of the ways I was I was actually able to use her in the game and that is for arena offense. I use her mostly to use with my double double dark gatito comp. For my arena offense I run Dark Cupid Lee for the HP and then Dark Cura and Double Dark Gatito. The reason why she's very very good is because she's also dark and what what that does um, is it also protects my other dark nukers from any light threats. It basically provides another layer of defense because the other light monsters have a chance to hit her instead of the other my my dark nukers, which I don't want to be hit at all. So she's basically there just to serve as like a bait plus a morale, an additional morale boost. I, I mentioned earlier when I was um, describing when I was talking about the 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 Sura and the Dark Atito, how um, the Dark Atito you basically want her want him to have like a thirty percent morale boost, and then you, if you add the Curas on top, that's like a forty percent morale boost on first turn, and then if you attack with her first again on the second turn, that's an, an extra ten percent morale boost. That's already a fifty percent morale boost on your Dark Atito. So any like lucky blue soul. Re um, generation on your Dark Atito, if you have like two of them, then th there's a very high chance that like, you know, one of them is going to have a full bar on the second turn, which would instantly just melt anything. Um, so I think that's one of the reasons why, like, she's very, very niche. Like, there's, most people probably won't be able to make any uses of her unless you have some very, some very specific monsters. Um, but I, I was able to, you know, make, make really good use of her because I, I do use her on my arena offense. For most people, I don't think she's worth the six thousand astrogems. Um, she's just like it's like just that one single use for six thousand astrogems really isn't worth it. But if you if you if you like her for waifu reasons, you can you can grab her as well. Yeah, that's that that's pretty much it. Mm. Where are we? All right, light banshee. Okay, this monster I would grab like a hundred percent. But that's just me because she has a she's she has a hundred percent uh, two two sat for two turns. Like that's that's like oh wait, there's there, yeah, there, she has a hundred percent two two sat for two turns. Like only only two other monsters, the dark Yuki with max skill and fire purse has this. Like this is just super super good. Um, if I if I were to run her, I would have to run another light unit to split up the damage. So I think if I, you know, what would be amazing if I had like two of her. If I grabbed two of her, and then like r ran a fire purse, and then ran like I don't know, ran another fire purse or some shit like that. I would have like the the ultimate savage. Um, 
She's actually quite tanky, so I, maybe if I had like really, really insanely good gems, I might be able to make her solo tank. Um, but it's gonna be pretty hard. Yeah, her base stats aren't aren't that good. Maybe if I had enough damage, like if I had like everybody on Siphon, then, then that that might work. Like if I had everybody else on Siphon, might be able to to make it work. I think she has potential. Like in theory, it should be. I should be able to do it eventually one day. So if I if she ever comes out as a package, I'll definitely grab her first, because she's probably like better than light uh, Neza, better than light uh, Magicora, because her her sap is just superior to to both of theirs. So I would definitely grab her first. Um, for most people, I don't think she's gonna help that much at all. Actually, no. For anyone like that's straight out stepping into Golem's P10, you can actually just run like Light Nike, split the damage, run her, build her like a little bit defensive, and then just run like two more sappers on like full attack, and that that will just make like a really really fast B10 team. I think she's worth grabbing. She's definitely worth grabbing for for most people. Like people past. Getting past uh, seven, eight, nine, moving on to B ten, I would definitely grab her. Her 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 saps too, just way too good. Um, yeah, it's kind of shitty. You know what? You know how I favor like second turn sap a lot more than first turn sap. It's mainly because if you if you uh, well that's that's actually for me it's a it's a personal thing. But for most people. Uh, it's a personal bias because I I have a lot of units. Well, not a lot of units, but I have some units on siphoning gems. And if you have units on siphoning gems, there's a you know when you nuke and it makes like blue souls, it generates more blue souls. So if you have siphon and you you have like your your AOE up, and then you nuke with your AOE, it boosts the the bar of most of your other units as well. So most of the time, my units have full bars even if they don't have a siphoning set, if my other units have siphoning sets. So I, I tend to favor second skill sap a lot more than first skill sap. But I think first skill sap is still very, very reliable um, if you are just just moving on to B10 and you're trying to you know get units for that. But I think if you're not investing anything for the late game, then like 6,000 astrogens is actually quite a lot. Like It's not really worth sacrificing 6,000 astrogens for a unit that you're going to only use temporarily for maybe um, <coughs> for maybe one or two months so I think in in that case like you know dark banshee in my opinion really is not not worth it um, plus she's a tank like if she was an attacker then you can at least build her with a uh, you know as a, as a as a nuker at the same time because she's like dark type but then she's a tank so it kind of just Kind of just fucked her over. Light Banshee, I would grab. Dark Banshee, no. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. Man, this video is getting hella long. We're almost done. Okay, so this is the Light Wall thing. Um, probably going to be coming up next. This is my prediction. She is a death down shock. She's actually very, very good on, on certain arena defense teams if you have like a full light defense because she has 100% defense down. This is actually very, very strong. Also very strong in Titans. Uh, I don't know how good it is in Colossus, um, but very strong in Titans. 100% defense down is very, very reliable. She also has a shock um, that's also very strong in PvP if, if she can ever get her bar full. She's also balance type. But she's not very tanky. You're going to have to put her on very, very good gems to make her, you know, as tanky as her other units. Um, I think she's pretty high threat, so, like, it actually forces people to focus her. And then you can have something that's also very high threat as well. And then that can that can then do some serious damage at the same time. Um, dark Wild Thing is definitely one of the best Dark Nukers. She has Stalker on both her, both her skills and... Um, her only, the only bad thing about her is her stat distribution isn't really all that good. Like, her attack's a little bit low, um, too much of it really went to HP. Would have liked a little bit less defense and recovery as well. Like, I, I would just really like more attack on her, um, so she can nuke harder. She has a 30% stalker, so with a base she already has 40%. The reason why she makes a really good dark nuker is because you can 
put her on like double attack crit damage and that can get you really really high damage if you can somehow manage to get 60% crit on three of your on all the substats um, of three of your gems you can basically pu push her crit rate up very very high and or like if you can push her crit up to like just 100% and and still not without using a crit rate gem then that just is like a bonus 60 something percent attack to her damage that, that's what makes her so powerful um, as a nuker but she's very like she's just just extremely hard to gem because getting 60% from substats means you would need to get 20% crit on each one of your substats which is definitely not easy to pull off um, the good thing about her is she doesn't require a square slot because you don't need to you don't need to um, yeah you don't need to really build put crit rate on her but as a starter build you can actually put crit rate on her and she'll still be pretty good as a nuker and she'll be very easy to gem so she's a pretty good nuker monster for for beginners uh, for like to, to gem up if she has a square slot because you can just put a crit rate on her and she can push 100% crit rate very very easily but you know late game she does require very very good gems and she's the, the unique thing is she's the, probably the only monster in the game that requires a triangle gem to maximize her potential because she to maximize her potential you do actually want to put a crit crit damage gem on her um, because you'll have like two attack and actually no wait that's only if you use intuition if you use intuition then crit damage is better but if you use ruin I think triple attack is still higher but then you need a ruin you need three ruin gems with 20% crit rate yeah just I don't know good, good luck getting that that's, that's fucking impossible um, <laughs> three ruin gems three ruin attack gems with 20% crit rate on them good good fucking luck uh, so for the wild things um, if you have some light units you're building a light defense and she's like the last piece of her puzzle probably grab her I think she's 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 really good um, pretty fa fairly fairly decent monster situationally dark one also a good monster to grab if you have no like other really good dark nukers like no dark Mona no dark whatever you can probably grab her I think she's 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 pretty good like she's definitely really really good um, one of the best dark nukers because of her her passive skill okay uh, moving on to the Hanas the Hanas are Alright, Light Hana, I think is definitely worth grabbing. Um, she's very, very strong. If you're, especially if you're building like a full light defense team, she she can actually do better than Dark Cupid because she's actually light. So, you know, light units do more damage to dark units. They're running like a full dark defense team. You're running full light, then you want to be a threat to them at, at, the, at the same time and make sure they're not a threat to you. And she's also an HP aggressor. She, her stats aren't as good. But she is light, so basically what you can do is you can just gem her, or you basically just still gem her HP because she is an HP ag aggressor. She has the exact same skills as a Dark Cupid. Um, you can pretty much use them in the same same way, but she's just like a slightly weaker version of the Dark, dark Cupid, but she's light, so that's like her one advantage. If you're using her like in a full light team, then she's better than a Dark Cupid. Um, But yeah, that's, I think that's that, that's that's pretty much it. <laughs> I would grab her at the same time if you don't have like a dark cupid or, or or already have her or yeah, if you don't have a dark cupid, grab her. That's 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 pretty much it. Like she's she's good enough to to grab for six thousand astro gems. Um, dark one is yeah, dark one is no. Dark one is just no. <laughs> Um, Light Siren. Now, I think this monster is really strong. Like I, I use I use her for Titans. I think she's also really really good as a healer for Colossus because she gets her shield up so fast. I've been using her for Colossus and I think she's really really reliable. Um, she's also a really good healer all around. I think because she she has Morobu's shield and. Like, Morobu's healers are also very strong because they get their bars faster and they get their heals faster. So they're very reliable healers. 
And then she has she's a shield healer, and she's like the best skill for any healers. Um, it skills with max HP, but that's also very good because she's in. A, I mean, it skills with max level instead of max HP, but that's also very good because she's defender type and not HP type. She has very low HP, but she has pretty, um, pretty high defense. She also has pretty decent attack. So I think if you really wanted to, you could put like one attack gem on her and put on siphon. That can also make it work. Yeah, that, that actually actually could work as well. Um, she doesn't have a lot of recovery, but it doesn't matter. You ma mainly using her for, for her shield anyways. Like she's basically just there to keep spamming shield. Um, yeah, pretty pretty good monster. I don't know if they're going to release these ones. Like the ones with three star counterparts. Um, there's only like two more monsters to left to left to review. Now the dark dark siren is uh, she heals allies HP, so this is similar to the dark yaksha and the light sura, um, and she has dominance, so similar to the light cura. the The problem with dominance, as I, as I explained before in PvP, is it basically takes an extra turn. In PvE, it also takes an extra turn, so it's Usually it's a waste of time if you're at the point where you need to you're already farming very very fast. Um, it doesn't really matter too much. The cool thing about dominance is it, it can't be resisted. It basically is similar to that that SP siphon steal, but you don't really gain any SP from from using dominance. You just make them lose SP. Um, but she also has like a pretty cool heal that you know heals based on allies HP. So she's like a yeah she's she, I think she's the only healer like actual healer that's also a passive healer at the same time but i think she's a very reliable healer like if you if you happen to get her um you probably use her for b10 temporarily but I'll, i don't really think she's worth six thousand astrodims to get the light siren in my opinion probably is not worth six thousand astrogems to get either um probably would not grab them uh Light Mandragora, she's really tanky. She has taunt, she has sap, but the sap is actually very weak compared to like the Banshee or the the Yaksha. I mean, it's still very good because you can use her as a solo tank with sap. Um, but I don't think I would pay six thousand astrogens for something like that's, you know, somewhat inferior. But she's also very easy to skill up if you, if you just because the Mandragoras are farmable on the map. So if you happen to get one, you can actually skill up relatively easily. Um, I think she's all right not really worth 6,000 astrogems the dark one is a crit reliant monster but she is so fucking strong that i would i would gamble 6,000 astrogems for her to try to get one with the square slot like she's she's one of the best nukers in the game uh she's the only monster that has hunter on both her skills actually no 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 there's monsters with, let me correct myself she's the only dark monster with hunter on both her skills there are other monsters with Hunter on both their skills, but Dark Monsters start with 50% extra crit damage. So if you add another 50% on top, compared to a normal monster, that's 100% more crit damage. It's straight out of the box. Like, that's, that's fucking insane. She has 3,100 attack. That's, that's pretty high. So, doesn't get better than this. Like, I, I would gamble 6,000 Astrogems to try to get one of the square slot um, if she ever comes out. I would grab multiple of her. I would grab as many as I can. Um, and yeah, and, and then I'll call it a day. Okay, I think we're done. I think we're finally done with all four stars. Are we done? Yes, we're done. Okay, so that's that's basically just my opinion on every single Nat Four Light Dark Monster um, in the game. Which ones would be worth buying for six thousand astrogems, and which ones aren't really worth getting? Kind of went in, went into detail, um, a little bit too much detail. This video has been an hour long. But, I mean, I am feeling a lot better now, if you <laughs> didn't know I had like food poisoning for the past few, d few days. I found out this trick that wor works super well. I, I was having like this horrible headache. I, I like popped three Tylenol tablets at the same time and just worked like a charm. Like, I'm, I'm high as a fucking kite right now. Like, I, I don't feel shit. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, that, that's pretty much it. So, I'll, I'll see you guys in tomorrow's video. Still don't have my PC yet. I'll... I should probably give a little bit of a channel update. I still don't have my PC cord yet. The reason I don't have my PC cord is I 
I freaking left it in Taiwan because I'm a dumbass. All right. Um, and NCIX was supposed to ship that shit in like three days or some shit, but it, it's still not here. It's it's been it's been a long time. It's already been it's already been four business days. Um, but anyways, that's. That's that's just something. That's that's a little bit of a d update uh, about my situation. But uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I'll, I'll I'll keep making videos with my laptop until I get my PC, and then once I get my PC, we'll have a new scene and all that shit. And like, I'll be able to have slightly better quality. Okay, um, and probably make more videos every day. So that's pretty much it. Um, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.